you, but just yeah. I can't, answer, can't answer anybody's questions. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today's guest is back by popular demand. She came on the show and did a cooking demo that wowed everyone. It was elegant. The food was delicious. She knows her way around the kitchen. Her name is Linda Tyler, and she is going to be doing vegan brunch. See, we had vegan picnic a few days ago, so you got to follow up a picnic with brunch. She's going to be making potato waffles with sour cream and vegan mascarpone cheese and fluffy tofu scramble. Please welcome back to the show, Linda Tyler. I, you really impressed me last time. Thank you, Chef AJ. It's so great to be back. Yeah, I think you have such, I mean, did you, did you go to, you didn't go to culinary school, did you? But you're back. No, I've just been cooking a long, long time. I would have thought just the, just your manner of presentation and your skill that you were, were a culinary school graduate. See, so you don't have to go oh, to school to, to excel at your craft. So brunch is really probably a favorite meal among a lot of people. Yeah. And I know Father's Day is coming up, so that might be a possibility, too. That's about 10 days away. So there's still time to make this or parts of this for Father's Day, if that's of interest. But this is all purpose. No oven, which is always good in the summer. Oh, wow. I love things that don't use an oven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the the egg uh, dish I want to start with came about when I got, uh, I've been noticing, uh, you know, I teach classes at Portland Community College and I do one-on-one -on -one, um, lifestyle coaching as well. And I noticed there were some people who, Try, who loved eggs, they tried the typical scrambled tofu, and they said it was kind of hard and crumbly and chunky. So I really looked far and wide to figure out whether I could do soft and fluffy, because a lot of people like softer scrambled eggs. And that's what this is. So I tweaked and refined and worked on this new recipe with the secret ingredient aquafaba, which is the brine that chickpeas are stored in when you buy a can, or you can also make your own aquafaba. I went down that rabbit hole and I have a whole like long post on homemade aquafaba. So if people want to make their own really thick aquafaba, they can check out my post on that. But this is a pretty easy recipe. Um, so I'm gonna, it, it's, it depends on a good um, nonstick skillet. So I'm gonna start that preheating because it doesn't take long to get this batter ready. So um, know that you could make your own aquafaba. And I always wondered who was the guy or gal that discovered all the uses for it? that. That is so creative that people took something that has existed for as long as canned beans have existed and repurposed yeah. it. Yeah, like who would have thought, like, I think I'll just whip this and see if it turns into egg whites, right? So uh, they, People trace it back to only 2014. They trace it back to a French chef, Joel Roussel or something like that. That's what I saw when I looked at the history of it. So it hasn't been that long. It's kind of a newer thing. Um, it could have been longer than that, but that's the history that I found when I checked around. So yeah, who, who knows? That's a great innovation. And who would have thought to try that? Do you think that chef is still alive? I don't see why not. That was only eight years ago. Okay. Uh, you got to spell his name for me sometime because it'd be fun to have him on the show. Yeah. Yeah. The founder of Aquafaba. I will uh, follow up on that and Thank you. find it for you. So um, the first ingredient is firm tofu, uh, not silken tofu, not extra firm, just regular firm tofu. It's about six ounces, about a heaping cup full. And then we have half a cup of aquafaba. And I don't know if you can see this, but it is, it's like, you know, it's very gelled. Um, the chickpeas, when they're cooked, they release a form of pectin, which of course is what makes jams and jellies thick. So that's why it's thick. 
And that's also why it doesn't behave exactly like egg whites. It, does, it has very little protein, has very few calories, but very little protein as well. So it doesn't, it doesn't function the exact same as egg white, but you can get a lot of great, great effects from it. And then we use about a tablespoon of nutritional yeast, which of course adds flavor, a little cheesy flavor to whatever it's in. And then we're using kala namak, which is also called black salt. I've heard of that. Yes, which um, has a sulfur taste to it, which is similar to egg yolks in, in taste. So it gives it sort of a sulfury egg yolky taste. So it's really nice in anything that you want um, to, to taste like eggs. And then we put in some turmeric for color. So they don't, so they're not white. We want them to be a bit yellow. Okay. And a little ground pepper. We might put some pepper on at the end as well, but I like, I love pepper on my, on my eggs. So, um, I am going to blend this back here on my counter. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, while she's getting her stuff, please tune in tomorrow at 11. I have a very rare show with John Robbins. I had to ask for years. Yes, the recipes will be available, but please understand if you're watching on Facebook, you can't see anything, which is why I really recommend that Facebook lovers hop on over to YouTube because then you can see what's called the show notes. The show notes are what appears below the video on YouTube and that's where the written recipe is. So please consider hopping over to my YouTube channel and watching there and maybe even consider subscribing or giving this video a like for another 30 subscribers. I'll be at 160,000. So I really appreciate you guys watching. Um, I'll find out, V, if Kala Namak is black in color. I don't know. I've never used it. The recipe is not there yet, though. It will be there in just a few minutes. I've got to get the show started first before I actually manually enter it into the show notes. But you are going to love the show. There's two shows tomorrow. There's a cooking demo at two with Nick DeVoren, who actually missed his slot last month because he cut the tip of his finger off, and John Robbins at 11. Yes. Um, oh, Susanna says that it's a grayish pink. Linda, people are asking, what color is solemn? I can't even say that word. Alanamak. Yeah, what color is it? It's more, it's not black. It's more lavender. It's sort of a purple, oops, purplish, purplish white. Okay. Gray. Some would say gray. Uh, Linda, what, what, what did you say the name of the chef that discovered aquafaba was? The first name is Joel, I remember, J-O-E-L, I'm pretty sure. And I think the last name starts with an R, then an O. Okay, because uh, one of the viewers says it, it was Goose Wohit. So I don't know. We, we, need, we need to research this. Maybe we need to out. find out. We need to find out because wiring minds want to know. Now I'm thinking, what else do we have laying around that we can repurpose? That's right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So what I'm going to do now is use my skillet and I'm going to switch cameras so I can give, give everybody a, um, an overhead view of this because I know when people look at, looked at the recipe, they said, well, what does that mean? So I'm going to use this. So what we do is have the, is it working? No, it's not working. Let's try that again. Oh, I think I changed the audio. <laughs> there, now we can see it. Okay. Um, okay, can you still see me okay? I don't see you. I only see the pan now. Can you hear me okay? Oh, I can hear you fine. Okay, All right, so I've been preheating the pan to medium high, medium low actually, and then I pour it in and it starts to bubble. And you, the key to this is not to stir it constantly. You wanna just pull it across gently a few times. And each time you let it sort of settle back in and cook on the bottom. So that's what we're gonna do here is um, 
you cook it for two or three minutes like this be, until it starts to set around the edges, which it's already starting to do. And then you use a spatula. I like to use a, a silicone spatula for this. And then you pull it across, let those curds, those soft curds start to form. And then you do that, like, then you wait another two or three minutes and pull it across again. And it usually takes two, three, or, usually three or four times for all of the parts to get cooked, but you want it to stay, you want it to, to stay um, on low and you wanna just pull it across, not quite like an omelet, but something like an omelet where you, you know, you don't wanna just break it up and stir constantly. First time. So I have the my my stove about two thirds of the way to low from medium. So it depends on your pan, how it conducts heat. It depends on a lot of things, but you sort of want this gentle boiling action. What kind of pan are you using? This is a green pan, which I really like. Have you tried those? I haven't, but I've heard very good things about them. Yeah, I, ha I have another one. Um, I forget what brand it is. It also starts with a C, but it's very heavy. And I like this. This isn't as heavy as it might even look because I the, the other one I have, I just like have to almost use two hands to lift it. And it's very hard to scoop things out of it. And so far, this isn't too old, but so far it is, um, you know, the, the, the coating is really strong. I, I don't use metal on it. Uh, so it's, it's really staying very, very nice. I have a small one too. So, and I don't know, it seemed to be on special at the point I brought it, bought it. So it was a, I thought it was a pretty reasonable price. It almost looks like you're making a crepe. Yeah, yeah, so you can see I'm just kind of gently pushing across and kind of filling in because we don't, we don't want to form stiff curds that separate from each other. We want that, that soft feel to the final product, but of course we don't want it wet or gooey either. And the, um, you know, the, the tofu and the aquafaba don't introduce a lot of sort of thick curdles themselves. So it works well that way. The, you know, this is, this is best when served immediately right out of the pan, but, you know, I have stored it in the refrigerator and had it the next day and it was good. It was fine. You know, I just warmed it up in the microwave so you can warm it up. I have not tried freezing it which is always my students' first questions about a recipe. So I, I think that would be a little dicey since tofu does tend to toughen up when you freeze it. So I'm gonna go in for, num for number three here. Your students, so where do you teach? So I teach at Portland Community College and Mount Hood Community College, both of which are here in the Portland area. And I teach online. Uh, I started teaching two years ago and it was obviously after the pandemic and they were looking for people to teach online. And so it's great because after the first term, I went from a demo format to a cook along format. So I would send, I send them the recipes early they can decide which recipes they want to cook um, and we can troubleshoot with them in real time. So it works out well. And you can't, you can't do that. They only, the demo kitchen, Mount Hood doesn't even have a demo kitchen. PCC has one, but only, it only um, allows for 12 students. So, you know, I've had upwards of 40 or over 40 students sometimes. So it, it really is a nice, uh, it works well. The format works really well. Have and you into the unfortunately the for them, I don't have to make samples, but <laughs> good for me. 
Have you run into Dr. McDougall or Mary yet? No, I have not. I don't know how much they come into Portland. Do you? Well, I mean, they live there. So I mean, I yeah, guess I they thought they lived a little out shopping sometime. That's right. Well, it's a spread out place. I don't know where they live in Portland. I, I don't know, but when you talk to Dr. McDougall, you see water behind him. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't live near, the, he may live near the river, the Willamette. Yep, that's it. Oh, okay. So that's, a, you know, eight miles away from me, but. That'd be um, so fun to run into him. You could say, I saw you on Chef AJ. That's now. right. <laughs> that's right. Okay, so we're almost done here. And. You know, it starts up, it starts out as a lot of batter, but it, it really, I think is, is only two servings. So if you're going to make, you know, for a crowd, you may want to start some early or have a bigger pan or even, you know, one of those long griddles that fits on a stove. If it's nonstick, that'll do. So these are almost done. And you can sort of cook them to your desired to your desired softness or slightly harder if you like but you know my mother hated anyone cooking eggs for her she was very choosy picky about her eggs and I know a lot of people are like that's too hard that's too soft you know everybody wants it just right so this is actually a nice dish for that because you can catch it right at the stage that you like them. So just about done here. I usually like eggs harder. I know some people would stop right there. I like them a little harder, so I will stop there. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and say these fluffy eggs are done. I'm gonna put one serving. We'll have one, one plate full here. So I'm going to put the soft, fluffy eggs on this plate and we'll put some other things with it. So there's our soft, fluffy scrambled tofu. There you go. That's item one on our brunch. It looks exactly like scrambled eggs. It does. It does, doesn't it? You can put some chives on it or, you know, I like extra black pepper on mine. So you could do that too. Now you said it was best eaten when made. So go ahead. If you want to eat it, we'll just wait. <laughs> I'll have one bite just to do a quality check here. Yeah, that's good. You can taste the, the colonomic. So it has that sulfury taste. It's smooth. It's soft. It's not dry and crumbly. So if you like the soft scrambled, this is the recipe. Okay, so as I was thinking about what else you could do on a brunch, you know, one of the things everybody loves is avocado toast, but they're so big, you know, one piece or two pieces is breakfast. So you don't want a ton of avocado toast at one time. So I was thinking that mini avocado toast would be pretty and would let people take one or two or more if they wanted. And you can also put different toppings on them so people could choose. So what I did was toast some Ezekiel 4-9 bread here. So it's, you know, among the healthiest bread you can get. And I'm gonna cut these into quarters, which I think is a nice size for you know, a brunch side dish. So if you want a lot more, you can just take several. But if you just want one, you can just take one and they're a good size. So let's check out this avocado. Let's hope the avocado gods are looking kindly on us. Yes, yay, beautiful avocado. And I am a little more of a smashed avocado toast person, not so much a sliced. So I'm gonna just mash this up with a little bit of, oh, there's a bad spot. But it's contained. 
I mean, you know, avocado toast became such a thing, but people have actually been putting avocado on toast for like, as long as I can remember. I mean, yeah. it, I just don't get like how it got so popular. I mean, I, especially as vegan, you know, instead of getting like a, a BLT, people would always order an ALT, avocado, lettuce, and tomato. I mean, and I've been vegan 45 years and I've seen people do it. So why it's like such a thing now, I don't get. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it, it photographs so well. It's um you know, it's fast. It's a, it's something that people who aren't vegan, you know, would say, yeah, that would be good. You know, so maybe it's just because it's so, such a good idea, such a easy, fast thing. I don't, it's, it's a good question. I don't know why. Okay. So then we have that. Just a little bit of lemon juice. And I, um, I have some green salt. I saw the, your program on green salt. Really yeah, good. there's a discount if you want Chef AJ and you'll get 10% off. Ooh, I hope, okay, next time I will. Oh, I wish I had told you. Okay, I got to get that up. There. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. It tastes good. At first it tasted, I'm not the biggest fan of seaweed and at first it tasted pretty seaweedy to me, but I've gotten used to it and really do like it. I am, I'm, I haven't yet given up salt, but. Oh, I got a blood test and my, I got low cholesterol, at least for me. I got it yesterday. That was nice. 168, which I was happy with. So, all right. So here's our, it doesn't have to be perfectly obviously mashed. We'll just sort of smash that. And then we will put it on these little toasts. And we'll garnish these pieces of something. So you've been a vegan 45 years. Yeah, September 1st, it'll be 45 years. Yep. Where did you grow up? I grew up in, well, to the age of 11, Chicago, and then oh. I moved to California in oh, okay. 1971. So then, yeah, California. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. I would have been vegan sooner, but my mom wouldn't let me. But the minute I left home to go to college, I'm like, I'm not eating any more animals. Oh, good for you. Even when I ate them, I couldn't eat them if they looked like them. Like, I mean, I could eat yeah. like, like, like if soup was made with chicken, you know, like if it didn't look like it, I yeah. could not eat it. You know, like I could eat tuna fish because yeah. it, it was a can. But if it, oh gosh, I never ate a fish that looked like a fish. You know how they would serve it like with the bones and the face? It's like, yeah, I, 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 I and, it, and the thing is, it smelled like fish. So it's yeah. like, I never understood people's yeah, love. Yeah, I, I, I have never liked yeah. fish that much. But my, yeah, my, my first husband was also a child vegetarian, and it took him a long time to figure out ground beef and things like that. But chicken was the first to go because it looked like a chicken. You know, you could see the bones. Yeah, I was in college when I became a vegetarian in California. You went to college in California? Yeah, I grew up in the Inland Empire, Rialto, California. And then I went to University of California, Riverside. Yeah. So just some, here's some simple ideas for toppings. Um, you could take um, cherry tomato slices, and those look lovely. And then you could, on top of the cherry tomatoes, you could use, you could do sort of a bruschetta type vibe with some basil sprigs and some California balsamic, right? Love that California balsamic. This is the, the classic flavor. So just a little bit of that. And then some get this basil plant. Get a few 
there's those small sprigs. So get these small sprigs there. And then maybe on some other ones here, you could um, radish, you know, still radish season. If you slice those really thin, those are good. And, you know, one of the seasonings I have started to make is dukkah, which is a Middle Eastern seasoning mix that has some roasted ground nuts, but then also a lot of roasted spices that you can, you know, make in your in your food processor. So I'll put a little dukkha there on the with the radishes, and then these last three, maybe some chickpeas. I have a recipe for avocado chickpea toast with seasoned chickpeas and you know you can make enough for four or five days of avocado toast so that's an option here we go maybe with some just a little salsa so that gives us a little extra flavor with some salsa heavy on the cilantro and the red red onion so that's just a few ideas you could also do red onions, you could do olives, you could do scallions, sunflower seeds. We all have our favorite avocado toast. So this mini avocado toast idea uh, can be something that goes well in a brunch. So I'll put one of each of these on our breakfast plate here. So we're partway done. That's such a great idea for appetizer too. Yeah, that's very true, yeah. Okay, so we have our mini avocado toast, our fluffy tofu. Now we're gonna do some potatoes and we're gonna do waffle potatoes. If you haven't done those, it's fun and they taste really good. So I just have a regular inexpensive Cuisinart waffle iron. It's a, the round and I spilled some salt on it. And what you do is take, I like to use small potatoes just because they cook a little faster than larger potatoes. And you need to pre-cook them, pre-boil or steam or microwave if you have one of those microwave express bags. So you just need to uh, cook those, not roast them. Just make sure they're cooked. And then what we do is smash them in the waffle iron. And if your waffle iron is nonstick and it's still in good shape, you haven't you know, been scratching it with a fork or a knife, it should be fine not to have to use any sprays or oils. So um, it works really well. I have seen approaches that say, leave it down for 10 minutes. I like to do six minutes. I think that's plenty. So you get to, you can choose. Maybe you want yours like super crispy. Uh, I like a little crispy, but still a little soft on the inside. So I, I do mine for six minutes. So once the green light comes on and it's preheated, I will put these four. I'll put my first four in here. If you were making enough for a larger group, you could make these and and then you might have to turn on the oven to keep them warm at 200. So, but at least it's not very, not very high. It's not like blasting your oven at 450. Um, so you could do them a little bit in advance and, um, and have them in the oven at, at 200. Do you know who invented potato waffles? No. Well, she's been on the show. This I know, Sandy Pluis. She ah. is from Australia and she has a blog and it's called Vegans Eat Yummy Food. And All she's right. made them on the show. And Jerry's worried that they're going to stick. But I find if you have a nonstick waffle iron, particularly yeah. a Belgian one, and you don't open it too soon, they will come out great. Yeah, same here. I mean, I've had a teeny bit of sticking, but nothing that causes them to me to not be able to get them off. And as yeah, I think as long as you have kept your waffle iron clean and the nonstick surface is still good. 
They work for me. I find that when I do sweet potatoes, those do stick because there's so much sugar or something that yeah. that, that does mess up the waffle iron. But if you right. just do like a Yukon gold, and I find like if I cook them in advance and chill them, they come out even better, but they're, oh, they're okay. fantastic. They taste like potato latkes. They do. They do. And that's why I wanted to, okay, I have the green. I'm going to start these and then I'll set it aside and we can make a little bit of sour cream. So I put for mine, I have just these four quadrants. So I put one in each and I put the little ones in the back and then you just gently, but firmly smash them. And it will, you'll start hearing the sizzle. So I'm, I'm going to start my timer and move this right in front here, and we will let those cook so we can show folks. So uh, what I wanted to serve these with is salsa and sour cream, but you could also do sour cream and applesauce. You could do ketchup. You could do, you know, chives. You could do cheese sauce, nacho cheese sauce, pesto, you know, uh, the sky's the limit with all the different toppings you could have for potato waffles. So I'm going to make my um, plant-based sour cream to show you how easy that is. So that starts with silken tofu, three quarter cup of silken tofu and for this size recipe, I like to use my bullet blender. On my website, I doubled the recipe so if people want to use their Vitamix or their Blendtec, their powerful blender, they could use that. But my my Vitamix does not like small, you know, small batches. And then we have for um, creaminess, we have a quarter cup of soaked cashews, raw cashews, and then two teaspoons of lemon juice. Followed by a teaspoon and a half of apple cider vinegar. And you refrigerate your apple cider vinegar? I don't. Yeah, Do me you? neither. No, I don't. It's, it's, yeah. I, I don't, I don't even refrigerate my California balsamic. Yeah. Oh, good. Cause I haven't either. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I haven't had trouble with that. That's good to know. Um, yeah. I, tahini, I don't either. Uh, half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And the dill, we, um, you know, you can play with that. If you're gonna use the sour cream for, you know, sweeter or dessert purposes, you can skip the dill weed and cut way back on the garlic powder, but that's up to you. And then quarter teaspoon of salt. And then I am going to head back here and blend this. Let's see. So don't be afraid to try those waffles. As long as you have a nonstick waffle iron, I promise they'll work. Just that's the thing. Don't cheat. It's the same thing when you make regular waffles. If you open it too soon, that's when things stick. You got to be patient. Yeah, absolutely. So this is, you know, pretty fast. If you Use boiling water to soak your cashews. That's only about 20 minutes. And then you saw how quick this was. So if you think to start your cashews soaking earlier, it's less than five minutes. 
So you could, in fact, I beat the, I beat my potatoes. They're still in there another minute and a half. So this, the, your, the sour cream um, gets thicker uh, after, as you chill it. So don't be uh, alarmed at first. It will seem maybe too liquidy, but have no fear. It will get just to the right texture. And uh, my students really, really like this recipe. They like, this tastes exactly like sour cream. I mean, it's hard to remember certain tastes. Now I've been vegan 12 years and it's getting harder and harder to remember exactly how things tasted, but this, this really hits the spot for sure. Um, yeah, I thought of latkes too. And what a, what a way to, to cook potatoes as opposed to latkes, which takes so much oil. So exactly. Deborah saying, will it work with a Belgian waffle maker? I prefer a Belgian waffle maker because I like those deep holes in it that I put my, I put applesauce on mine because that's what yeah. we did. We always put applesauce and onion on them. So I put apple, I actually have a video making them. I'll link to it in the, in the chat. So you guys yeah. can see. Yeah. And do you use cream or potatoes? These were, I just use Yukon gold, just yeah. the Yukon gold. And I look for ones, my waffle maker, I, I can't, it's a dash. So I have it in my Amazon store. So there's four little squares. So I just kind of look for four that are right, uh, the right size that will fit. Sort of a medium, small. Yeah. Like three, yeah. maybe three or four ounces. Yeah. 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 These are the minis and they're good too. Again, I was thinking if this is one of three or four things you're going to have for for a brunch, you might want to stick with minis. All right, so the six minutes is up. Let's bring this guy back. Let's see if, okay, so here is our, here, one stuck to the top a little, but just, you know, you saw how easily I could pick that up. Now you could do, do you, how many minutes do you do? Chef. Oh gosh, I do about 10. I like them okay. really, I like them super duper crisp. Yeah. I don't worry about crisping things or acrylamides. I eat A plus foods and I, yeah. I don't worry about that. Yeah. But I like them yeah. really super crisp and well done. I like a little crisp and soft on the inside. So I I love this. I love the six minutes, but yeah, I think anywhere from six to ten. I think it depends on your waffle maker too. You get to know yeah. your waffle maker as you use true. it, you know. That's true. All right, so, so there are our four, there's four potato waffles up there at the top of the plate. And then we can remove this waffle iron. And we can um, spoon, so we can dab them with a little bit of this sour cream, or you could put salsa on first, or you could skip salsa, or you could add, you know, any number of things. And then let's just do a tiny bit of salsa on each. Okay. There, so those are, loaded up potato waffles. So there is our savory choices for a brunch. And now we're gonna go on to sweet, which is strawberries. And love strawberries. Yeah, this year, our strawberries are super late because we've had a wet and cool spring, probably the wettest and coolest we've had in a long time. So luckily this week, my friendly neighborhood stand started selling strawberries. So I got a flat and I'll be going back tomorrow for another flat. So they're just gorgeous, you know, where the insides are actually red and pink and not white, beautiful. So, you know, for, for your brunch, use the finest, freshest fruit you can find. It doesn't have to be strawberries it could be blueberries it could be peaches nectarines anything that works well but fresh fruit as 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 fresh as you can find is always the best and i wanted to do a little bit of a parfait 
and share my mascarpone recipe. Um, mascarpone is a Italian cheese. It originated in Italy. It's one of the highest fat cheeses there is. And it has a little bit of a sweet lemony flavor. And luckily we can imitate some of that um, in a vegan way. And it's, used, it's, it's most famous use, I guess you would say, is in tir tiramisu. So if anybody yeah. remembers tiramisu, that's, what's, that's what makes, uh, mascarpone cheese is what makes it so creamy and delicious. So we can have the same thing and you can use mascarpone on in savory dishes like pasta, sandwiches, and then you can use it in sweet dishes like this, like a, a fruit parfait. So, I am going to make this in my Vitamix real quick. So it takes two cups of uh, cashews because it is such a rich cheese and you don't use a lot when you use it. So, um, and then we use two thirds cup water. A quarter cup. I do refrigerate my maple syrup. I don't know if you use maple syrup, Chef, but I don't. But if I did, I would refrigerate it. I yeah. usually use date syrup, and I don't refrigerate it. Oh, I should start substituting in date syrup. Try. I got a discount for that too, ten percent. At I love date lady. Okay. And I just got a super chat from Angela. Thank you. But what do you mean? Uh, it's. Uh, it, it's official. I, I don't know what that means. And you guys are asking about purslane. Purslane is a green, it's a weed actually, and it's very high in omega-3 fatty acids. I think it's the green that's highest and you get it in ethnic markets and it's often called vertilago and it's very good. Oh, I'm at 160,000. Woohoo. Okay. Thank you. All right those last 31 people and to the one and the, to the 157, I bad at math before. Thank you guys so much. All right. She ate it. Okay. And I added two tablespoons of lemon juice. Interestingly, you know, even though it's going to be for a sweet dish, we add a teaspoon of nutritional yeast. Again, it is a cheese. So it needs a little bit of that funky fermenty cultured flavor. And then a teaspoon of lemon zest, which of course gives it a very sparkly bright lemon flavor, especially if I can find it here. Let's see. Uh, I can't find the lemon zest. That did I, oh, here it is. Okay. Teaspoon of lemon zest and a teaspoon Again, to get a little of that cultured, funky fermented flavor, a little bit of miso. And I would definitely use white miso here. We want it to be sort of sweet. So, and that's it, not too many ingredients. So my last trip to the blenders, I'm gonna blend this up. So please come back tomorrow for two shows, 2 p.m. Nick DeVorn's going to make, an, uh, I think, a corn poblana soup. And 11 o'clock, legendary John Robbins. Okay, and here we are with a lot of mascarpone. This does freeze well. So if you make a batch, you can freeze whatever you don't use, and it'll last months and months. So just as a, for instance, parfait, 
we can tune in a bit of the mascarpone, don't need a lot. And then lots and lots of, I like to put it on the bottom. Lots of, you could do layers, you could do it in a, you know, any kind of pretty glass or even drinking glasses. You can even, you know, I bought a, a dozen votive candle holders that are like this. Can you see those? Oh, that's very clever. And you can make mini ones. Again, if you think people aren't gonna like a lot, you could just make mini. Of course, I don't, I, I never used them for candles, actually. I just kept using them. So you could make mini uh, mascarpone parfaits. It doesn't have to be mascarpone. And then you could use some granola chunks or the roasted almonds. And then you could do some fig balsamic vinegar as well. Or you don't even need the mascarpone. You could just do the fig balsamic. And then everything looks nice with a sprig or two of mint. So you could do that. Use my, there we go. Give that guy a little one. So you could have a beautiful dessert for your, for your brunch and everybody's happy and full and they don't even realize they're eating whole food, plant-based, oil-free. It's just delicious. Oh my God. It's so elegant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a few little garnishes and dribs and drizzles and you know, people, as they say, we eat with our eyes first. So when you're cooking for people who aren't plant-based and might be a little bit ambiguous and, and uh, may not, may be a little doubtful about it, make it as pretty as you can. And that, that does help a lot. Absolutely. When can we expect a book from you? Well, I am in the midst of writing a proposal, so I am hoping that... It will be within, you know, a year, year and a half. So and very will, it, will, it have, will it have recipes in it? Absolutely. Yeah. Mostly recipes. Nice. Yeah. And Which, Jerry said, what flavor balsamic did you use? I think you used the regular. No, there I, I used the regular on the avocado toast. Here I used the fig. Yum. Really good. So, yeah, they even California balsamic even makes a chocolate that would probably be good. Oh, on, on, on strawberries, that would be awesome. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Amy loves yeah. the, the votive cal candle holder idea. That's very clever. Yeah. Yeah. So you may have different shapes too, but people who just want a little bit, this will be perfect for them. And again, they can come back for more. Absolutely. Well, you are very talented. I, I, I think you should call your book The Elegant Vegan. Okay. Or elegantly vegan. I like that. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I thought of a great title for somebody one day on this show. I can't remember who it is, and and, and I think she's going to use it. So actually, the group sometimes comes up with great names. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. Well, yeah. thank you for having me. Well, thank you for being had, and I hope you'll come back because I, I would love, love to. Again. Thanks so much, you. Linda. This was a beautiful okay. brunch. I hope Great. you guys will try the recipes. And thank you all for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live and for getting me to 160,000 today. I appreciate it so much. We have two shows tomorrow. At 2 p.m., we have a bonus show with Nick DeVorn of Local Spicery, who cut his thumb off last month and did not appear. But the thumb will not appear in the soup, which is a uh, corn poblano. But at 11 o'clock, I have John Robbins. He is a legend, so I really hope you'll watch. Take care, everyone. And thanks so much, Linda. If you run into the McDougal's, tell I said hi. Okay, we'll do. Thank